name escapes me. Um, but long story short, they are protecting the locals and the small businesses as opposed to ruining them. And um, it seems to be a whole different aspect than what they're doing in Seattle, which is where right. you and I are both from. And you were living in Capitol Hill, correct? Yeah, I was up on Capitol Hill. When did you, when did, so you, you left Capitol Hill soon after, after you went to Columbia? Yeah, it was, it was November when I came. Uh, I basically, my lease ended and then I came here in January. So there's a little bit of time in between, but so, November 2020. Okay, so you were in Capitol Hill in the thick of things when? Yeah, Black Lives Matter was prominent and Chaz or originally yeah. Chop or whatever was going on. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of protests. One of my good friends, um, well, I was, he's, he's a friend, um, an old acquaintance that we both know, John Mitchell was uh, I know. a yeah, media yeah. He was doing media for the independent media source and his place was very close to where it was happening. It was essentially right near where the uh, next door to the yeah. police station. Literally, okay. he's the neighbor of the police station. Like it could have been like disclosed dude's address. But yes, he was literally next door and he's probably uh, out there hanging out in his van. And he was doing a lot of the filming, which was also fascinating. And so I got to spend some time right there, uh, get his perspective. They're an independent news source. Um, and so, yeah. Very, very interesting being around all of that and seeing it versus seeing what the media did, um, said about it and see, yeah, very, very, so, very interesting dynamic. So we know what, the, I mean, the media, as far as I'm concerned, was painting it as if it was this peaceful demonstration. And I got to do this quotations because let's be honest, a lot of, a lot of the stuff happening was not peaceful. Um, oh. And I mean, I went there for a walk. I'm, I'm, I'm referring to Chaz when they had the autonomous zone for like, what, three weeks, something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, so I was just telling you how my friend, she had bought an apartment pretty close to the location. Uh, she, I mean, when they were going through all the areas, the protests definitely came in front of her house and all in the area. So she was getting both ends of that. But her property lost a ton of value right off the bat after that situation. And it seemed like right now, almost like I think I found out like 35 businesses from that local area came together to sue the state of Washington for allowing that to happen for that long. Wow. Um, and so I went for a walk at Chaz. I took a I took a stroll there one time. I'll tell you what I think of it. But what was your take on that whole demonstration uh, autonomous zone? It's a little bit of a complex opinion that doesn't come to, I think it's good or I think it's bad. <clears throat> I think the, I, so I'm more and more falling into the category of anarchist or libertarian, like true, like libertarian. Um, I don't really coincide with the left or right or really agree with the system in place at all. Anarchy by definition doesn't mean chaos. Uh, it implies some form of system, but it essentially implies that there are no deistic powers that, uh, don't actually represent the voice of the people, which is, I think, the primary issue that we deal with now is that the powers at bay don't represent the voice of the people. They represent the interests of the lobbyists and the fund, people funding them on both sides of the equation. And so that being said, my opinion of Chaz is I think the idea, the idea behind Chaz of maybe there's maybe there is a small area, and I believe there is one in the Netherlands or something like that that is separate from the state that kind of gets to do their own thing in a localized communal setting, I think that makes sense. I actually think that's a cool idea. Um, and you know what, they can figure it out for themselves without red tape, without, if, if there's a lot of, a, essentially a, a decent amount of agreement there, Right. That's, that's a good thing. That being said, you know, it's complicated on how does that work. The, you would, you would hope that that concept could be practiced through the current system. I don't believe it can be, is going to happen through the current system without some other alternative to the system. Um, you know, that being said, the principles in which you need to build that on have to be, uh, they can't be threaded with, with taking, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, that's how America was founded, right? And um, that's some of the main issues that people have with America is they took, they took the land and raped and pillaged the Native Americans in terrible ways. And the retributions have not been hardly adequate. They took people from Africa 
and you know, so it was, it was this taking mindset. And so, not that I think that necessarily the heart of Chaz was to take, but they were taking. Um, I understand if you feel like that is all you have, why you would do that. But again, America was also birthed in that. Um, and so I think there's, you have to be a little bit careful with that. So I like the idea. I understand the, the pain that was caused by it for the local business owners of all kinds. Um, and I, I'm not aware of any way in which the community of Chaz tried to do anything to support those local businesses. Um, Actually, they, they were trying to it. do some straight up mafia tactics, uh, walking up to certain businesses saying that if they weren't for it, that they weren't going to be protected as if like, hey, something might happen to your business type of thing. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, I feel you with the concept where the idea of a self-sufficient um, community can be created yeah. if everybody there wants to be part of that community, everybody understands how that community works and so forth. My problem here is, is don't show up to a community that's already been built. You need to go to a place that's not already taken up by, by locals, by businesses, people who have put their efforts and their money and their emotions into creating their home. And then you show up and say, oh, now we're taking over and it's going to be like this. And so yep. that to me is where it's like, yeah, don't get me wrong. You know, look, look at something like, uh, what's that one uh, festival that everybody goes to in, in Vegas in the, in the desert? Uh, Burning, Burning Man. Man. Burning Man, okay. So that is the type of idea of a community that these people would like to build where there's no money involved. It's all based on love and services and goods and that type of stuff. Well, they go and they find a place in the desert where nobody's there. And guess what? People let them go there. People let them go spend one, two weeks, three weeks doing their thing. And that to me, I'm cool with that. If you want to start your own community and you want to bring people in. Everybody agrees. Fantastic. But it comes down to like, it's when you show up in other people's homes and you say, this is how things are going to be. And in a way, didn't even make it better. Uh, like It really just looked like a rundown music festival. Yeah, it, it did. So here, here's what's interesting to your point. What if those people did live there? What if that's where their homes were? No, you're right. You're right. Some <laughs> how, of how, all... how, would they, how would they voice their opinion in a way that makes change? What would you say? So what you're saying, are you referring to they already have been living there and they are also part of Chaz and they want to push forward. Yeah, this. let's just say the community is, doesn't even have to be as big of, as a city. Let's say it is the community of Capitol Hill. Sure. And the people of Capitol Hill say, we're not down with this stuff. And we're trying to make an influence by voting or by vo voicing our opinion or by creating alternative solutions. Yeah. But, but the government is suppressing that mm -hmm. for whatever reason. What, what should the people of Capitol Hill do? Sure. Uh, what they should have done is, one, you need to get a hold of property that, one, belongs to you or is going to be lent to you by someone who already owns it and they are okay with it. You would need to go and get some sort of permit if you're going to be, go outside of your zone for a certain amount of time. So everybody's aware that you're going to be here for X amount of time. And therefore people just kind of get along with the time frame. Um, but I mean, truthfully, it's like, I understand that there are circumstances where people want to make a change. You know, I've been in the position where I was thinking to myself, I used to be a lot more on that mentality of, um, I don't want to call it leftism, but you know, liberalism in general when it comes down to not being having your life dictated by the system i was very much in the position where i'm like yeah you know stay out of my business i'm gonna do whatever i want as long as you don't mess with me i won't mess with you but the older i get i understand that there is value to some sort of order and that taking that out of the wind just throwing that out the window in my opinion is just simply not the answer and it seemed like no matter how much the efforts were from these individuals pushing these uh, movements, it seemed like there was a real lack of order. Sure. And, and so I guess where I'm going with this is, first off, get the group of people that are, are okay with it, because it seemed like even within the, the movement, 
several people were there for different reasons. When I showed up there, to, it seemed like it was a mixed group of homeless people, uh, hippies, Black Lives Matter, uh, some people that came from outside the state just to check it out because they heard an autonomous zone got created, people coming from Oregon. And right. so it was a big mix. And it seemed like whatever the cause was, it wasn't a unified cause. It just seemed like there was like six, seven different main reasons that's why people were showing up. I'm here for free food. I'm here to hang out. I'm here to push BLM. And it seemed very chaotic in that sense. And yeah. so I would, I would definitely say, one, create a singular movement that's actually pushing in one direction and not just have a bunch of different groups just show up just because they're going to stick it to the men. And, um, and make sure that your movement is not going to trump regular people just like you, because I know you're fighting the, the elite, but in the process of you fighting the elite, it seemed like they were screwing up a bunch of the regular people just like them. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I think even if I zoom out away from Chaz and the idea of Chaz, because, you know, I don't think that that's not some sort of long term answer in the sense like let's shut down a ton of blocks. I don't actually think that people want that. I don't think people want Burning Man 24 seven or people would go do that. Right. Like they could like easily like. Yeah, I could go there. There are communes here. I did a five day ayahuasca ceremony. I could probably just stay there and chill out and do ayahuasca and serve the community and whatever. If I wanted to do that, I think, I think what's cool about it is saying we reject this system actually. And to your point, not not without supplementing some other system, but maybe the system is not a duplicitous democracy that feeds two wings of the same bird, no matter what we do. And right. we just don't let, we want to shoot the bird. That's what we want to do. We, yeah. we don't want to hop on one of the wings. We literally just want to shoot the bird and plant a tree or something. You know, yeah. I don't know what the analogy is doing. And so there could be some sense of order that I think actually still does include, uh, include the economy within your purview. It has to, because that's important, but where I think our current system prioritizes economic value and uh, distribution of wealth and as the prior, the primary goal, uh, which is rewired our values in a way that promotes either wild individualism, which is kind of the right right now, like F you guys, let me do what I want to do. But, but then in, in extreme circles, uh, doesn't have anything to do with traditional right. It's more like, we don't want you doing this stuff where you are either. And there's extreme, the, the phobics and everything versus extreme leftism, which says right now, like this all has to be communal. And th those two things I think need to exist in some sort of centrist place that questions the authority at bay. Um, but to your point, you're right. Like the, the issue with Chaz is if you just take over an area and then the next predominant culture fights back and takes over that area, that's actually mostly what I saw when I was on yeah. Capitol Hill, I saw re action, reaction, action, reaction. Yeah. Um, and, and that makes sense that that's happening because nobody likes what's going on. Neither side is happy. All right. Thanks for watching this clip from Appropriate Culture. If you want to watch the full episode, go ahead and check out us at appropriateculture.com. You can also check us out on social media platforms at Appropriate Culture. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.